Hello, fellow planters. So, so many people buy Venus flytraps only to kill them. And there are simple reasons why people kill their Venus flytraps. And for one, they don't look online at how easy it is to care for them, but also the packaging they come in from big box stores do not tell you properly how to keep a Venus flytrap alive. They actually leave out some critical information which will render the Venus flytrap dead shortly after you buy it. Now, to start, we have one from Home Depot, Walmart, and some from Lowe's. So these are the ones I'm going to feature in this video. Now, this one I got from Walmart. I planted it a few weeks ago, and look how happy it is. I love these bright blood red um, traps against the green leaves. I wonder if you call these petioles on the Venus flytraps just like regular plants. But if you look at the instructions here, they say keep planting mix moist at all times and in bright and direct light. Okay, fine, fine. Do not fertilize and use distilled water. Great. They tell you a temperature range, but that's during the growing season. They don't tell you anything about winter dormancy, you know, or not to put them in regular soil. You know, you typically want to plant a Venus flytrap when you get one. The easiest uh, media to use would be to use long fiber sphagnum moss or sphagnum peat moss. Now, Let's next look at Lowe's. They recently upped the price. I wrote a video on it from $4.98 to $5.78. But in the process, they are giving you much healthier plants. Of course, that's just so recent and we'll see if time will tell. These are what a lot of the Venus flytraps looked like when they were priced at $4.98 at Lowe's. You can see how the trap is very insignificant. This one has yet to fully open. And the long part of the leaf, it looks more like a liverwort. You know, I have some photos of liverworts that I ran into a few days ago. And here's one of them. Of course, the liverworts in the pictures are a lot smaller than these. And some liverworts do get a little bigger. But that's what I would call this if you want to refer to it as a specific variety. You know how people have like the Denti variety or B-52 of Venus flytraps. I call this one the, v the Venus flytrap liver. Anyway, so I, we'll see if they'll still stock this style at Lowe's. But the other day I stopped by one of the Lowe's down in Concord and they had these really huge traps. And you know, the ones they put in these things are not fully grown. Look at this guy, he's like, looks really like, yeah, I want a mouse, not a, anyway. Um, but here's the care instructions on the ones from Lowe's. Highlight, keep soil moist, never below 40. Wait, but Venus flytraps grow within 60 to 80 miles of Wilmington, North Carolina. And, you know, even down to Florida, you, you know, Northern Florida, they've received uh, snow. I remember like, Back in the blizzard of 93, they reported an inch of snow down around Tallahassee. So the reality is you can keep Venus flytraps outdoors below freezing. I even read online that they have been naturalized in somewhere even up in New Jersey. So the instructions, the care instructions on here are not that good. Plus, here's what they say. They never tell you to grow it in sphagnum, peat, or, you know, any media that doesn't have fertilizer. They don't even say not to fertilize on this one. So as you can see, neither this one from Walmart or that one explained that you don't plant these in regular potting soil. And you see this one that I got from Lowe's, um, Looks very happy, the Dente. So the, the ones after they up their price, they seem a lot healthier and happier than when they were priced a little cheaply. And rather than going to special carnivorous plant sellers and 
buying special varieties and paying a premium, you're only paying a little more and now getting much better plants. So the ones at Walmart typically cost five and these cost now 578 at Lowe's. So now we get to the one from Home Depot. They write warning, this plant eats bugs. Um, like, duh, I mean, if you have a dog or a cat and they probably drag bugs into the house, you're going to want something to eat bugs. What do they mean, warning? They say little pot of horrors, very funny. Then it says, Dianea etrapamoscus. Well, the thing is, it's really a Dianea muscipula. It's a single species genus. They're trying to act like they're presenting something new variety that someone will be like, oh, wow, I need to buy this. Wow. But you see, also, it is more expensive. It's priced at $6. Here, let me turn it around for you guys. $6.98. I had removed these things. I like the way um, these hold the pot in place. I had removed them. But if you notice, all the ones at Home Depot when I was there were healthy. And they had a lot. I think they got a fresh shipment in, so they were still healthy before they all died. But you see, here's one plantlet there. It just has several. Last year, I helped a friend plant one that he bought from Walmart. And this one, you can see a small little plantlet here, sorry, there and then here. So um, his, we took them apart and you had seven. So the new ones from Lowe's, the new pricing structure seems to have a single plant, but healthier ones and specific cultivars, although they don't advertise the cultivars. So then you can't really tie it to the cultivar if you don't have the provenance or whatever, who knows, uh, versus this kind. But I have bought some before from Lowe's where I was able, you know, in the past where I was able to separate and get multiple plants. So because you could get multiple plants, if you don't mind separating them and waiting for them to grow, then maybe six ninety eight is an okay price. But look at it. it, says how to care for me. And then it says, I lure bugs into my open jaws, shut them. That's not how you care for them. You have to read a little further to see that it's, they say moist sphagnum or peat moss, which is good because these, they don't even indicate that you can't put them in regular soil. It doesn't say do not put in soil. It says bright and sunny. Okay, others say bright diffuse light. So they're conflicting, you know, in these big box stores. They say bring me inside if it gets chilly. Not true. These can stay outdoors year round in the right um, planting areas. I'm sure if you're up in like Canada, you can't, but you know, here in zone seven or even further north in zone six, maybe even five, these can survive outdoors. They do need to grow dormant. You know, you can keep them alive for two or three years. And then afterwards, if they don't have dormancy, they, you know, they don't look very happy. Anyway, you, you know, it, it doesn't say anything either about not giving them tap water. So each one of these gives you something different in terms of care. Let's do a recap on the care requirements. When it comes to water, here from Lowe's it says keep soil mo moist. Walmart says keep planting mix moist at all times. They say planting mix, but it came in just pure peat moss, not a mix. But then they do say to use distilled water, which is good, because even Home Depot doesn't say anything about the type of water to use. Then you look at light, high light. Okay, that's good. Walmart, bright indirect light. It can have sun. Sun helps make the traps more reddish. Um, and then here it says bright but not sunny. So, you know, if you're worried because a couple of these say not sunny, you can always put them in an area that gets part sunlight during the day and not full sun, but the reality is they'll be fine. You know, they say that probably not to make, to make sure the soil doesn't dry out. You know, and then the, here it says never below 40. Here it says 60 to 85. Here it says bring inside if it gets chilly. But these are not tropical plants. They do need a dormancy and you can keep them outside below freezing. So as you can see, they conflict. Now, the good thing is that Home Depot says use sphagnum or peat, whereas Walmart and Lowe's don't indicate not to use regular potting soil. These are some of the main reasons why people buy these plants only to kill them. 
because they don't give you consistent, reliable information that's just simple on care. You know, you need bright light, no soil or fertilizer, allow winter dormancy, and just use distilled water. Outdoors, you can use rainwater. I'm hesitant about using rainwater when I have them planted in this fashion with a wicking setup because I don't want contaminants to cause any gunk to build up in here. Naturally, the acidity from the sphagnum or peat moss helps keep any algae growth at a minimum. But also, another thing that they don't tell you as far as care, don't overfeed your plants. You know, with regular plants, you can't you can give too much fertilizer. And with Venus flytraps, each plant typically in the wild will catch three to four insects a year per plant, not per leaf. So growing indoors and you don't have pets that you have to catch your own versus them dragging all these bugs into the house, you might as well just feed three or four times a year to the whole plant, not to a single leaf. Now, since the leaves will die after two or three feedings, you know, you give each leaf a different one versus not all at once throughout the growing season, not during the winter to allow for dormancy, keep in mind. And this way you can keep these leaves happier. So these are like the simple things to keep the Venus flytrap alive. Don't go by these. It's always best to search several websites online and look at other people's videos and see what different people have shared with their experiences versus some rudimentary care instructions that are not complete or accurate and will misguide you on proper care. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Thanks for watching and happy planting!